So um, once more here we are trying to compute um, the elasticity of tightness with respect to productivity in the matching model once we have um, bargain wages. So that's our goal. Um, so we'll proceed exactly like we did in the uh, matching model with rigid wages. We're going to start from our equilibrium condition. Um, and here, you know, tightness is given directly um, by the uh, labor demand relation, because we know that the labor demand relation, as we saw on our little diagram, uh, like here, for instance, the labor demand relation uh, this horizontal line we see is, is determining the tightness itself and then the labor supply at that tightness is going to give us uh, employment for instance. Uh, but because we're interested in um, how tightness responds to productivity, we can just focus on our labor demand relation. So the labor demand relation Um, it's going to impose that at any point in time, one is one plus tau of theta. One minus beta is zero over a plus beta one plus a theta. So now the question, uh, so we're going to uh, look at the impact the impact of, a, of an infinitesimal change in productivity and um, that small infinitesimal change in productivity would be denoted d log of a so of course we have a small change in A that leads to a small change in log of A, which we call D log of A. Um, that infinitesimal change in productivity is, uh, of course, going to lead to an infinitesimal change in tightness. And um, that change we're going to call it d log of theta. As earlier, we use a small change in the log of a and log of theta because at the end of the day, what we're interested in is computing elasticities. Okay, so how do we get the small change in tightness that's generated by the small change in productivity? Mm -hmm. So what we know is that before and after the change in productivity, the uh, the um, left hand side of the equation doesn't change, it remains equal to 1. So the right hand side of the equation has to also stay the same. Okay? Uh, so it has to be that the right hand side of the equation doesn't change, so that it stays at 1 before and after the change. So the labor demand relation remains the same. So now the question is what is the change, what is the small change in um, the right hand side? of the relation. So let's label, you know, we can call that whole right hand side, let's call it right and side of two variables, theta and a. Right? These are the two things that move in that right hand side. And what we know is that d log of right hand side, so if I want to compute the infinitesimal change in the right hand side, that's triggered by the change in productivity, we know that it's going to be equal to the elasticity of the right-hand side with respect to A times D log A plus the elasticity of the right-hand side with respect to tightness D log theta. Okay? Um, 
And this again, you know, is a typical uh, way to compute infinitesimal change using elasticities for multivariate functions. That's something that um, we've seen earlier also in the in the model with rigid wages. So we have that. And but we said like before the change in A and after the change in A, the right hand side has to keep the same value of one. So that infinitesimal change has to be equal to zero. Okay? Now, so that's going to be quite helpful. This is going to tell us if we reshuffle these things that d log theta d log a it's going to be equal to uh, minus the elasticity of the right hand side with respect to a over the elasticity of the right hand side with respect to theta. You can see that by just reshuffling uh, the equation above uh, here. So we know that if we want to compute the elasticity of, of tightness with respect to productivity in our, in our model here, in our matching model, with uh, bargaining, we need to compute the elasticity of the right hand side with respect to A and the elasticity of the right hand side with respect to, uh, with respect to theta. Then we take the ratio and we get our elasticity. Okay, uh, the elasticity of tightness with respect to productivity. So let's compute this. So first we're going to compute the elasticity of the right hand side with respect to A, which is by definition d log of right hand side, sorry. This is a partial derivative here, d log of right hand side, d log a. This is going to be our first step here. Okay, so what's the expression for the right hand side? The right hand side is 1 plus tau of theta, 1 minus beta, z over r plus beta, 1 plus r theta. Okay. Now let's compute the elasticity, partial elasticity with respect to A. So first we have the 1 plus tau of theta in front, it's a scalar, so here it's a partial elasticity, so we keep theta constant. We know that when we multiply a function by some scalar, it doesn't change the elasticity, so we can forget the 1 plus tau of theta. So I just need to compute the elasticity of what's in the second bracket. Okay, the so 1 minus beta 0 over L plus beta 1 plus R theta. So here we can see uh, we have the sum of two things. This expression here, this expression here. The second expression, the second term in that sum beta 1 plus R theta, that's something that doesn't move because of the partial elasticity, we keep theta constant. So here, really, we're we are computing the elasticity of, uh, of two things, of, of a sum. The elasticity of a sum is a weighted sum of the elasticities. But the second term that's in that sum, the elasticity will be zero because it doesn't change. So the elasticity of the right hand side with respect to A is going to be, uh, so the weighted, is going to be just the weighted elasticity of one minus beta z over A. The weight is going to be one minus beta z over A divided by uh, One minus beta z over a plus beta one plus r theta. So that's going to be my weight, and then I have to compute the elasticity of one minus beta z over a with respect to um, productivity. But one minus beta is just a scalar. Z is just a scalar. So these things do not affect the elasticity. So I just need to compute the elasticity of one over a, and the elasticity of one over a is minus one. So that's what I have. Um, okay, uh, and so here I can just simplify this a little bit. So the elasticity would be 1 minus beta z divided by 1 minus beta z plus beta a 1 plus r theta. Okay, and then the minus will come here.
So that's going to be my last issue of the right hand side with respect to A. That's the first thing that we have. So that's what we are trying to compute. That's epsilon right hand side A. Okay, great. Second step is Um, to compute the elasticity of the right hand side with respect to theta. Which is defined by d log right hand side d log theta. Okay. Uh, Alright, so let's go back to the right hand side. We have this thing here. You have uh, we see that we have the product of two terms, so the elasticity of the right hand side with respect to theta is going to be the sum of the elasticities. Uh, so the right hand side is uh, the product of two terms. So first we need to compute the elasticity of one plus tau of theta here with respect to theta. This one we had computed it earlier. Um, we had said that it was equal, if I remember correctly, to eta tau of theta. And that's from earlier work. This we said that was the elasticity of 1 plus tau with respect to theta. That's what we had showed earlier. Um, yeah, that's what we had. Okay, that's my first elasticity. And then the second thing that we have to add is the elasticity of that big second term uh, here with respect to theta. So again, we have the sum of two terms, but the first one doesn't depend on theta, so it doesn't have any elasticity with respect to theta. So basically, the elasticity of the second term is going to be, uh, so it's going to be the weighted sum of the elasticities. So the weighted sum of the elasticity of z thing, which is zero, plus the elasticity of z thing. So it's going to be beta one plus r theta divided by one minus beta. 0 over n plus beta 1 plus r theta times the elasticity of beta 1 plus r theta. So that beta doesn't affect the elasticity, so that's just the elasticity of 1 plus r theta. And again, here we have a sum, so what we need to do is um, <coughs> we have to take the weight on the second term, which is r theta over 1 plus r theta times the elasticity of r theta with respect to theta, but that's just one. Okay, so now all of this we can simplify a little bit. That's eta tau of theta plus, so we'll have one plus r theta that simplifies, plus beta r theta divided by 1 minus beta, in fact if I multiply everything by a, I have a here, I have z here, plus beta a 1 plus r theta. Okay, great, so that's what we have. Okay, so now we are going to be uh, in a position to bring everything together. To compute the elasticity of tightness with respect to A. That elasticity, as we said earlier, was going to be the ratio of the elasticity. We have that here. Um, so we can take the ratio and um, not forget the minus. So we have the d log theta d log a is going to be equal to, so first we have the elasticity of the right hand side with respect to a, which we have here with a minus. So we we'll have 1 minus beta z divided by 1 minus beta z. Uh, 
plus beta a one plus r theta. And then this has to be divided by the second elasticity, the elasticity of the right hand side with respect to theta, which is here. But what I can do is just uh, flip that. Uh, I can just flip that uh, around. So here in the numerator, I'm going to put one minus beta z plus beta a one plus r theta. And then in the denominator, I'm going to put beta r theta a, which comes from here, plus eta tau, which comes from here. But of course, this has to be multiplied by that whole expression here. Yeah, because I've put everything under that denominator. So now just to simplify a little bit, which I don't get tangled with all these things. So remember the labor demand equation is that A is equal to one plus tau, uh, one minus beta Z plus beta A, one plus R theta. That's just our labor demand equation. So A over one plus tau, is equal to one minus beta z plus beta a one plus r theta. Okay, so this is uh, this expression here is just what I have to multiply and uh, eta theta with. So I have to multiply this here by that expression uh, because I put everything under that big denominator. So I'm going to multiply eta theta by this because these two things are equal. So by a over one plus tau. Okay. Uh, so now I can simplify things a little bit. So this remember that's from the labor demand. So I get d log theta d log a. It's going to be equal to one minus beta z. Of course, these two things here and here are going to disappear. I'm going to keep all of this in the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to have <coughs> a times beta r theta plus eta tau over one plus tau. Okay, um, so that this is our big result here. 